Good evening, my name is Pastor Jeremy Shines and this is I Am Love Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless this word, Lord. Teach us, guide us, instruct our hearts, Lord. Open this word of yours and breathe through it. Nothing more, nothing less. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, we're going through the scriptures from now on. Things that the Lord has prompted for me to preach on. If you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, we'll be starting at verse 33 to 46. The parable of the tenants. Here another parable, Jesus says. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent another, sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretched tenants to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruit in their due season. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people producing its fruit. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. Let's pray again. Lord Jesus, bless this word, your word. Make it come out and bear fruit. In Jesus' name, open our hearts and minds and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. I love saying that. So let's break this down. Jesus says, listen, listen, anyone who has ears to hear, listen. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. Let me ask you something. Who built the vineyard? Was it the tenants? Was it the workers? Who built it? It was the master. The master of the house built the vineyard. The wine press built the tower. So this is an illustration of God. God is the one who builds the building. God is the one who builds the organization. God is the one who builds it. And then he looks for people that he will hire to take care of it. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be a church, even though it can be a church. It could be anything. God builds everything, okay? And then he hires people to be the managers, to be the bosses, to be the employers. He hires people to be the servants. You and I, all we are on this earth doesn't matter how high up you are. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States, if you're the king of or queen of England. It doesn't matter. God ultimately owns everything. And we're just leasing it. <laughs> we're just borrowing it. In other words, we're borrowing it. 
that boss that you work for doesn't own you. The stuff that you have, you don't own. Your house, your spouse, your kids, we are all just leasing our kids, so to speak, or our spouses. We're just borrowing it. That's it. Okay? And so check this out. The master chooses who's going to run his house. Who's going to run this building? Who's going to be your spouse, right? Or who you're going to be a spouse of. Who are going to be your children? He, he gives us all the things we have in life are gift. And he's like, who's going to take care of my house? Who's going to take care of my daughter? Who's going to take care of my husband? To you women, right? Who's going to take care of my children? To you parents. Who's going to take care of my church? To you pastors and elders. Who's going to take care of my business here on earth at your workplace, right? And so the master being God, leases it out, says, here, I'm going to choose you and you and, and you, for whatever reason, to run these establishments here on earth. And this is what happens. He leased it to them, and he went away. There are seasons where Jesus shows up, and Jesus leaves, and then he comes back. I've had seasons where I have done good for the Lord, and the Lord, he said, congratulations, you have been faithful with little. I'm going to increase um, your responsibility. Come and join into your master's uh, joy, <laughs> right? <laughs> and there's seasons that where I have not done the right thing, and the Lord comes and he says, why haven't you done the right thing? Why haven't you taken care of your wife the way I wanted you to take care of her? Why haven't you taken care of your kids the way I wanted you to take care of them, Right? And he's like, hey, I'm coming back again. Get it together. Just like a normal job, right? Every so often, you get an inspection. You should get an inspection, right? How you're doing your job. You get a review, whether you should be demoted, whether you should be fired, or whether you should be promoted, right? That should be all of us. Well, whether you work or not, whether you understand this or not, this is what's happening everywhere, okay? This is what's happening everywhere. And this is the spiritual truth. God says, I will increase you if you're doing right. I will increase your authority. I will increase your responsibility. I will increase you because I want you to take care of more. I want responsible managers. Amen? And whether you are even an employee, God says, are you taking care of the little that I've given you? If you are, I'm going to increase you. If you're not, I'm going to take away the little responsibility that I've asked of you. you. Hear what I'm saying? So let's go a little further. When the season for fruit drew near, like I said, he comes back. I've had him come back and give me rewards, and I have him come back disciplining me because I wasn't doing my part, right? Or doing what I was supposed to do. So when the season of fruit so drew near, Jesus says, before he curses a fig tree, he says, I'm going to come back and see if next year or two, if you bear fruit. And if you haven't, I'm going to curse the fig tree and it's never going to bear fruit again. All right? That's a reflection of our life. Jesus, God, wants us to be, Genesis chapter what? To be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. All right? So are you being fruitful with the responsibilities that God has given you, and are you multiplying that for his glory? So when the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. I think of like angels here, right? Or just ministers. He sent his servants to, hey, what, give an account. What have you gained? All right. Gave you $100, for example to invest that and to bring more out of that, right? So if you start off with $100 and we come back next year, you should have $1,000, right? Or you should have $100, $110 or a little more, right? You should have more than what I left you with, Jesus said. You know what I'm saying? You take a seed, you throw it in the ground, you water it through that year, it grows into a plant, maybe grows some fruits. You're like, wow, now you have another fruit that has multiple seeds in it that you could plant in and you can grow multiple other trees out of it, right? Maybe 
takes a little longer than a year, but see what I'm saying? That should be the progression of our life is to grow. Are you growing? And are you growing the, the things that the responsibilities and things that God has given you? And he sends his servants to go check on us. Could be angels, could be other ministers, who knows? <coughs> but this is what happened. This is what the tenants did. Okay? This all is talking about Jesus, but this is how it also relates to us. They killed the tenant, they, or the, the tenants killed the servants that was sent to inspect what they've been doing with the property or the stuff that the master gave them to take care of. And they stoned another. So this is referring to Jesus, right? And the Pharisees in his day. God gave them the responsibility to take care of his sheep, to take care of his people. We can see that today. It doesn't have to be a church, but it all obviously re refers to churches too, right? In today's text, in, in, in their days, or in uh, what's happening today, right? There's a lot of people, I'm sure for right reasons that are being let go of their jobs, right? But there's a lot of people for wrong reasons that are being let go of their job. And it's not because they're bad workers. It's because they have bad bosses or leaders, that are not necessarily stoning them or killing them like these, this was actually happening. These Pharisees were, anyone who disagreed with them, they would secretively get people to murder them and throw them, you know, in the ditch somewhere outside of Jerusalem, which was called Gehenna, right? They were hiring the Romans to kill these people for them who disagree with them. It's crazy back in the day, right? But we do that kind of today. We may not kill people Physically, but we kill them with our words or our intentions, right? We, we, we outcast them, long story short. That's a form of killing them, right? You don't kill someone just physically. You can kill them in your heart. If you hate someone in your heart, that's committing murder, right? And outcasting people. So these people, whether then or now, kill people or fire people for no reasons, not justly, right? Or unjustly, or kick them out of their churches, not justly, but unjustly. So the master, being God, sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he said, I'm going to send my son. This is referring to Jesus at that time, right? I'm going to send my son to see what's going on. Back in the Old Testament, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord heard the cries that were coming from heaven. He says, I'm going to see what's really going on in Sodom and Gomorrah for myself. Right? The three angels that show up to Abraham, and Abraham pleads multiple times if there's at least this much righteous. And they finally get down to 10, and the angels are like, all right, maybe it was Jesus, right? Maybe it was angels. But it says it was the Lord. He said, he called these three beings or whatever the Lord. And so the Lord goes there to see himself. Not that he, he already knows, but now he's like, let me see my, for myself, right? I don't know. <laughs> and that's kind of what's going on here. Let me see for myself, the Lord says, if this is really happening. And lo and behold, what do they do with Jesus? They kill him and they throw him outside of Jerusalem in a place called Gehenna, right? Where they were, where everyone, where Judas was and all that, where everybody was thrown out if, if they spoke against what these leaders were doing. And it's interesting here, is that they will respect my son, but clearly they don't. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. So let me draw a picture here. Let's rewind to the first picture that I drew. The master builds this house, this workplace, or this church, or this organization. He hires these people to take care of the people he's going to bring into that organization or church. They start to feel like they're high and mighty and they start slaughtering the people, 
right? Taking advantage of the people. In this case, killing the people that disagreed with them, right? Or the employees. The master hears of this news, sends his servants to go inspect and see what's going on. They kill them too. They slaughter them too. The master himself says, I'm going to send my son to see what's going on. Sends his son. They kill him too. This is what's going on. Or fire him too, right? <laughs> and this is why they're doing it. Because they think that they own the house. They forgot that they were servants to God. How many people do you see in this world think that they are God of, of their world or the world or their organization or their church? They forgot that they work for God, in other words. They forgot that, that they are held accountable by God. They forgot that God will inspect their work. He will send servants to them. He will judge them, that they are servants. And you see, when I am doing wrong by my wife, it's because I forgot that she is the daughter of the king and, I, and, she, and I'm supposed to steward her. And that's when I start to think, oh, you belong to me and I'll treat you however I want. That's what's going on here. When I start taking advantage of people from the church, for example, taking advantage of my children, I forget that they're not really, they're my children to steward here, but they're, they ultimately belong to God. And I'm going to have to give an account of how I treated them. I'm going to have to give an account how I treated my wife. I'm going to have to give an account that how I treated my neighbor and how I treated the congregation. I'm going to have to give an account as a boss, as a manager. Hear what I'm saying? And that's what's going on here. They forgot that they work for God. And they started to think that they were God, in other words. And they could do whatever they want. That looks like what's going on in our world, not just with churches, but with any kind of form of leadership, particularly what's going on in our Oval Office. They forgot that they have to give an account to God. They started to think that they can get away with stuff, get away with anything. And so this is what happened. They, they tried to get rid of everybody. They tried to shut everybody's mouth, right? They tried to do some backdoor dirty stuff, right? And so Jesus is asking these Pharisees, what do you think will happen to them? And they said to him, he will put those wretched, miserable tenants to death and let out the vine vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruit in their season. He's going to look for other managers and other bosses and other pastors and other, and he's going to see, are you going to take care of my sheep? Are you going to serve them as a, as a steward should? And stop taking advantage of the congregation and stop taking advantage of your employees and stop throwing them under the bus, right? Or in this case, he's giving those sheep to the apostles because Jesus, God, knows what's in their hearts, that they will actually take care of the sheep versus the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin of that day. Happens all the time. When certain leaders are not doing their responsibility, people leave that job because they're usually unjustly fired or blamed for something they didn't do, and they go find another boss who will take care of them. Or they leave a church because the church is probably super religious and super doesn't care about them, right? And they go find another shepherd to shepherd them. But this is also what God is doing. Because we read here, Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This is referring to, to Jesus, of course, as the cornerstone, but this also applies to us. This was the Lord's doing is marvelous in our eyes. So God is building his house on people who have been rejected. If you ever notice that 
the only real way to build any organization or family or church or business is to bring in rejected people because nobody's perfect. <laughs> Everybody has flaws. Everybody screws up. It's crazy because in this day and age right now, I went through three interviews and I had to go through three different phases per interview of each job. I went through different job interviews, three different ones so far. And they're like, sent me through three different interview processes. And I'm like, why? I'm not hired yet. And they're just, ugh, they're scrutinizing every little detail of my life. Let me tell you something, folks. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> they're looking for perfect people that to hire. No one's perfect. And that, can you imagine if our churches, actually our churches kind of turn into that, right? We're like, let me, let me see your resume. Make sure you're qualified to, to be here in our church. I'm just trying to show up as an attendee. I'm just trying to show up as a congregation member. Oh, me, me, me. oh you've got some sin here. We're not going to be able to let you in. <laughs> because that's us. That's a wicked tenant. That's a wicked manager. That's a wicked leader. Come perfect before you come to this job. Come perfect before you come to this church. But here's what the Lord says. Those are wicked tenants. This is the righteous one. Jesus says, the stone, not just referring to himself. He's referring to himself as the stone. But he's saying, I build the house of the church. I build the house of the family. I build the house of organizations, right? Unless it's all built on me, unless that organization's built on me and my truth, unless that house is built on me and my truth, unless anything that's not built on me and built by me and built for me, it will not last. It will crumble. So I was rejected. I, Jesus is saying, am perfect was rejected by imperfect people. I qualified at everything, and they still rejected me. <laughs> y'all still rejected me. <laughs> I put in my resume and my application at all of your places and your churches. You rejected me, and I'm perfect. <laughs> That's what Jesus is saying. But guess what? That's, that's human nature. But I'm going to build a house. And I'm going to take all those rejected stones. And I'm going to, I'm the first reject, the one they rejected. And I'm going to be the cornerstone. And I'm going to build a house of all the rejected people that have been fired for no reason. That have been killed for no reason. I'm going to build, I'm going to take all the rejected of the world. And I'm going to build a kingdom. I'm going to build the church. I'm going to build it. Amen. That sounds good, right? It's crazy. It's crazy awesome. It says this was the Lord's doing. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from, from those who just are looking for perfect people, which will never find any, will be taken away from them, and are going to be given to people who are actually going to take care of people, to shepherds, to, to, to better managers, to better employers who are going to be merciful and kind and forgiving. These Pharisees were unmerciful. They were unkind. They were not forgiving or repentant. I'm going to give, I'm going to give that to people who are responsible. Therefore, I tell you, the king will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken. Interesting, right? The stone represents the gospel. It represents the cornerstone, right? Jesus. If you fall on the gospel, it'll break you. But if the gospel falls on you, it'll destroy you. It'll obliterate you completely. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. He's calling us out. He's exposing us. 
someone better shut them up. But if we shut them up, then it'll validate him. But if we don't shut them up, it'll validate him. What are we going to do? Well, either way, they're planning on killing him. I like how it says, unless the Lord keeps watch of the city, the, those who watch the city watch in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build any other house build in vain. Unless the Lord does it and chooses who he's going to choose, it's just a waste of time. Amen. So my question to you is, are you building a house because God is building it through you? Or are you building your own house? Are you put there by God or did you put yourself there? We have to discern and make sure that this is the Lord's doing. Because if it's not, it will fail. Or you will. Well, you're going to fail anyways, but it won't succeed in the end. And most importantly in this passage here, before I end here, is are you a good tenant to your spouse? Are you being good to your spouse? Are you taking care of your spouse's physical needs? or spiritual needs? Are you taking care of your children? Physical needs and spiritual needs. Are you taking care of your congregation? Physical needs or spiritual needs? Are you a good boss if you are in leadership? Are you a good leader in your church? Are you a good example? Are you taking care of the needs of your people that God has put you in charge of? Or are you using them and taking advantage of them? You know what you're doing. If you haven't heard in this message already, remember, you have a boss. And one day you're going to have to give an account of everything you did or did not do. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless this word. Forgive us, Lord. Teach us, Lord, to take care of the responsibilities you've given us here on Earth's earth. Help us inspect ourselves to compare ourselves with your word and see what we fall short, we need to do better in life, to treat people with the utmost respect because ultimately we're going to give an account to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and God bless.